Hi you guys. Uh, what I'm going to do today is alter this tin. It's basically like a blank Altoids tin. Uh, my sister-in-law actually gifted me a whole box of these. So I thought she actually gifted me another phone for the time being. So maybe I could make some good length videos. So I figured I would just alter this and maybe I can get like a whole alteration in one video for you guys. So what I'm going to start off doing is I'm going to prime this and I'm going to use the white chalk paint instead of gesso because that's just what I like to do. And I've got some on my paper plate here which is what I actually use as a palette. And I'm going to start with the bottom. I'm not going to, I guess I should leave the lid closed. I'm not going to put it on the part that the lid closes on to because I think it would just rub off anyway. So what I'm going to do is just get it around here. And I've got my heat gun too so that I can speed the process up for you guys. And I'm not trying to get it on there smooth. I'm just putting it on there and leaving the brush marks in there because I like the added texture. And because this isn't just a flat surface, I kind of have to do it in steps and let it dry before I'm able to get one part done. So I'm going to get this on there and then dry it some so that I can move on to the next step. I'm not looking for perfect full coverage. I'm just looking for a base primer. Something that the modeling paste and the paint will be able to grab onto. Because the metal is quite slick. So you just always want to be sure that you do some type of priming when you're going to be working on these types of surfaces. So now I'm going to use my Ranger heat tool just to dry it enough so that we can move on to another step. Before I dried it all the way, I figured I would actually just go ahead and cover the bottom part of it since I'm going to be drying that part anyway before I move on. And this is the bottom, so I'm not really worried about texture as much as I am on the rest of the piece. So I'm just getting some paint on here, just enough to coat it. Again, I'm not worried about the brush strokes or if those are seen or not. In the end, it'll just give it added texture to begin with. Okay, I've got the bottom part dry, so now what we're going to do is just move on to the lid portion of it and get that coated with the primer quick. I 
And you want to be careful when you're using your heat tool because especially since this is metal, it will heat up. So you just want to make sure that it's cool to the touch before you grab it to do anything else with it. Just trying to make sure you guys can see good. Okay, you guys get the idea. So I'm going to finish covering this and get it dried, and I'll be back and we'll put some additional texture on it. I did want to show you real quick, now that I am doing the top, for this, I am just, instead of making it smooth, I'm just tapping the paint on there so that it does get those I know it's shiny because I've got the light on so you guys can see can you see that texture better now it just makes it even more textured Okay, now I've got my primer on there. It's on all of my surfaces that I want it to be on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a stencil. And this one is a Tim Holtz stencil. I'm just going to place it right on the lid here. And I'm going to use some Master's Touch modeling paste. I actually got this at Hobby Lobby for 50% off. And I'm going to take my Finabear Art Basics silicone brush. You can use this or you can use a palette knife, you can use a spatula, whatever trips your trigger. Just get a little bit here and Put it through my stencil on the top. And when you're doing this through the stencil, you can make it as textured or as smooth as you want. Because there are no rules in art. It's all about your preference and what you like. And then I just kind of take my finger and clean up the edges a little bit, just so that it's not rough. And there you be, there's some texture on there. And I'm going to heat this with the heat tool a little bit, but you want to be careful because if you get your texture paste and um, like other mediums too hot with your heat tool, they will bubble up, so you just need to be careful about that. So I'm going to dry this with the heat tool, and then we'll move on. 
one other thing I did want to tell you guys before you move on to the next step. I'm going to go and wash this stencil really quickly. You don't want to let this modeling paste dry on there. I mean, I have let some paint dry on there, but the modeling paste will make it to where it's more raised when you go to do your stenciling in the future and you want to be able to reuse your stencils. So just make sure that you wash them with, you know, warm water right away. Okay, you guys, so I have the texture paste dry enough to where I can start gluing some elements on now. And I kind of have picked some out. These are some resin pieces that I've molded. Uh, and, you know, just some little odds and ends, a couple of old keys, some buttons that I had colored previously for a different project, an old bullet casing, a um, clothes pin, safety pin, uh, and just some like odd and in beads that I have. So what I'm going to do, I know this is going to be my base layer for my elements. So I'm going to use the Nature's Touch Gloss Gel, and I'm just going to use a popsicle stick, and I'm going to get these elements glued down to my tin. And then, you know, I'll go from there. I'm not really sure about exactly how the layout is going to be completely. But it's just fun to play as you go along. And I just, I don't know, it probably wasn't in the camera. I'm still working on that. But I just dab it on the back. And then just press it down good. It doesn't have to be full coverage. The stuff works really great. And once it's dry, it's not going anywhere. And this is a brand new one, so I'm still taking gel off the top of the lid. See, like on that one, I only use just a little bit because a little goes a long way. Unless you're using like heavy metal objects and then I would, you know, I tend to put just a little more on there just to be on the safe side. But I've never had an issue with anything coming off of any of my canvases or anything since I started using this stuff as my adhesive. And it doesn't harden completely right away, so you still have a little bit of play time with it. Okay, so we'll put those pieces there. And then what I'm going to do, I am going to put some more elements on top. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and get my base coat on these elements. And I'm going to do that with the chalk paint that I used as the primer to begin with. So let me go ahead and get that back out. Just the chalk paint. It takes me a minute to get this because it's down at the bottom I'm running out I'm gonna have to go and get some normally I wait till the gel dries completely before I start doing this but because I'm doing a video on it I'm just gonna go ahead and try to get it coated as much as possible and then dry it a little bit so that we can move forward with the project Okay, and now that I've got those base elements on there and I've got a coat of primer on there, it's still really wet and that's okay because the gel will still work to adhere the other elements even though it's wet. And once I get everything on there, I'm going to hit it with the heat tool to get it to dry more so that I can start putting the color on there.
and I typically get this on me. That's okay. And some of the excess you can go back in with a brush or some type of tool or whatever just to remove it. Uh, I have like a part of a paintbrush where the top broke off. But I didn't throw it away because I use it to kind of get in some of these nicks and nooks and crannies a little bit. And I'm not looking for completely clean either. I'm just looking to see how we're going to do the composition. Sorry about that, guys. I have fur babies, and I don't have editing software where I can record and then do a voiceover. So you just kind of get it all as I'm doing it. Um, so I've got these pieces on there. Maybe we'll throw that right there. Maybe another button somewhere. Yeah, I think that looks good. I think that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to get these on there. I'm going to primer these elements again. And then we'll move into adding color. <laughs> 